There's not a lot of people who yet own the Fisker Ocean, the new electric car, which I've got to say looks, looks pretty good. However, there's a guy on YouTube, I'll put a link in the description to his channel, you can check it out if you like, who has a Fisker Ocean. This is the version with, I believe it's 600 horsepower, apparently 600 kilometers or 370 miles of range with a massive 113 kilowatt hour battery pack. He mentions that the car has some problems. There's really probably five main things he points out, but he also points out five of the things about the car that he loves. Here's what those five issues and five positives are. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. I'm Sam Evans. I'm the Electric Viking. And we don't have any Fisker Oceans here in Australia. In fact, to be honest, there's not many of them right now. Fisker have cut production. Uh, they've said that they're, they're not going to be able to produce as many EVs this year as they thought they would be able to, but that's pretty normal. That's standard, in fact, for pretty much every electric car manufacturer or startup. That includes Tesla, that includes Lucid, that includes Rivian, that includes um, the beleaguered Nikola. There's a lot of EV manufacturers. They promise the world Rivian and they deliver a bit less. So, Fisker. I made a video talking about how I think they could go bankrupt. Now, in my opinion, that is the number one reason you should consider whether or not you want to buy one of these cars. I think they're actually pretty good. Five good things, five not so good things that are coming up soon, but I think they're good cars overall. However, do you want to necessarily possibly own a car where it may be orphaned? You may not have a parent company. Uh, that's very possible. This company has gone bankrupt before. Could it happen again? It absolutely could. Their losses are mounting. They lost about 89 million in the last quarter, about 85 million in the quarter before that. If you lose too much money for too long, then that's what happens. You go bankrupt again. Now, I made a video about that. I made a video about the history of Fisker himself, Henrique Fisker. He's very um, charismatic, a little bit snakish kind of guy. Very intelligent though. So anyway, check that video out. What are the five best things about this car? Well, one of them is the range. Now he hasn't unfortunately done a range test. He did drive the car a fair way in his video on the Autobahn. He did, I believe it was about 130 miles an hour. He did just over 200 kilometers an hour on the Autobahn. Of course, that's not really that fast, especially for a car with the kind of power that this car has. It's got 550 horsepower and it can do zero to 62 miles an hour in 3.9 seconds. So he did 129 miles per hour to be exact, 208 kilometers an hour. So in theory, you can get 610 kilometers on a single charge, but he hasn't confirmed how much range he's getting in the real world. He says that he will soon. I'll make a new video to update you guys with exactly what he has to say soon. However, what are the five things that he points out that are good? Five of the things that he points out are good. He says he likes the design on the inside and the outside. He feels like the seats are comfortable. He likes the fact it's not a Tesla Model Y. He thinks, you know, if you're driving a Tesla Model Y, then you've got to figure out which one is yours in the car park. There's so many of them. This is distinctive. It's unusual. And I get that. I agree. The design looks good. He's a big fan of the design. This all comes down to really that one thing, isn't it? Appearance exclusivity. One other point he makes, he says it's super silent in the car when he's driving. He's very impressed by the lack of wind noise and just how quiet the car is. Obviously in an EV, any kind of wind noise is exacerbated. You just basically hear that because there's no engine sound. He seems to love that one thing more than anything else. That is the seats. He thinks the seats are fantastic. He says he's not a light guy. He's not big, but he's not a light guy. And he was concerned the seats could be an issue for him but the seats are really, really good. Like a, a really good mix between comfortable and sporty. Now, clearly he loves the power. He, he likes the 550 horsepower. Anyone coming from a petrol powered car, uh, you, you realize that 550 horsepower is more than it sounds because you just have instant acceleration, instant torque, all that torque and power pretty much at any point in the rev range. Not that there is a rev range, but you see my point. He loves the overall space inside the cabin. Now he does point out one problem with the interior space, but it's not the actual space for the passengers in the cabin. He thinks that space is really good. He obviously loves the steering wheel as well. He mentions it a few times. He loves the steering wheel. And overall, he seems to think the driving experience is pretty good, but he does mention some pretty significant issues with the driving experience. Now, one of these is the ESP is slow to react in wet conditions. So the car's got a lot of power. The electronic stability control didn't really kick in. He was driving it in the rain and that kind of scared him a bit because it felt like it was kind of 
put your foot down too hard and you're a little bit out of control. He says that the car has big tires and in theory, lots of grip, especially lots of grip in the dry, not so much in the wet, but it can understeer through corners. So although it is an all-wheel drive vehicle or four-wheel drive, I'm not really sure which it is in terms of all-wheel drive versus four-wheel drive, it does have a front and a rear motor, obviously. It's still, it understeers. So it's clearly front wheel biased. In addition to that, another issue with the car is its torque vectoring system doesn't react as quickly as he thought it would. So it's not the handling in terms of getting around corners is not quite what you might expect because I think really the number one reason for this is it's extremely heavy. It's a 113 kilowatt hour battery. I mean, that's a, that battery pack is about 50 kilowatt hours bigger than the battery packs in Tesla cars, for example. So the Tesla Model Y, it's much, much bigger. Of course, that makes a much heavier car. Now, one of the things he criticized, he said the boot, the boot space wasn't as big as you thought it would be. Um, obviously, the passenger space is great, boot size, not so much. And also, some other people have pointed out one missing feature. It doesn't have a frunk. So if you open that front bonnet up, there's you, you can't actually use space there. There's, there's nowhere to put things in there. It's basically taken up with actual you know engineering and parts and filters and all that kind of stuff. Another thing he mentioned was the lane changing beeping. The beeping could be annoying. He wanted to try and turn it off because it was frustrating to deal with the noises that the car was making. He basically was able to turn it off, fortunately, but he said it was a bit annoying using the actual ADAS computer software. He's hoping that in the future, based on what Fisk of the company have said, they'll make over-the-air updates to that software and improve the software so that it works better in day-to-day -day life. But at this point in time, I believe he thinks that the lane change feature and also the auto lane assistance guide are overly sensitive and can be a bit irritating. Overall though, it seems as though his experience is generally pretty positive. I still have to come back for me to the car. I'm actually a big fan. Now, if another company made this car, I would be a lot more confident to recommend it. But because it's Fisker, it's a startup, they've basically, I feel like, deceived people out of hundreds of millions of dollars in investment money, the US government. They, I mean, he took, the US government managed to get a lot of their money back, but in the end, they still lost 150 million US dollars back in 2013 from Henrik Fisker himself. It's just the history of the company makes me concerned that history could follow them into the future. Remember, they're making some pretty significant losses and they're investing a hell of a lot of money, which is great, but I think the promises are just maybe a little bit too grandiose. I mean, they just revealed four new electric cars, right? Do you really need to have all these five different models? I mean, it doesn't seem necessary for a startup to go that far to build sports cars and all these different types of vehicles within a short space of time. I think if you focus on just having say two really good models, that is the best solution for startups. But hey, I could be wrong. And it's definitely a car that I think a lot of people will be willing to take a risk on based on the pros that it has. It's got some really good features. I actually really like the car itself, like I said. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching.